Hello again. Today we're looking at how you pay for electricity. During the film there are questions and when you get to those you need to pause the film, see if you can answer the questions and then really start it again, see if you got them right. Once you've done all of that, go and answer the quiz at the end. To start with though, you need to make sure you've got a pen and pencil and a calculator. So if you go and get those, then we can start when you're ready. Now let's start off by having a look at some questions from last lesson. Understanding power. Number one, what is the relationship between energy and power? Number two, what is power measured in? If an electric kettle provides 360,000 joules of energy in three minutes, what is its power rating? Number four, a building is 63 meters tall. How much energy does it take for a 60 kilogram man to climb to the top? If he does, how much power does that take? And there's a picture to watch over you. Whilst you pause the film, and answer those questions from last lesson. So how did you do? That is uh, James Watt. The James Watt, I think, did things with steam engines. And he was the person who came up with the idea of horsepower. So 10 horsepower, 20 horsepower. James Watt was the one who came up with that, and so they named the units of power after him. Let's have a look at our questions. So first of all, power is the amount of energy provided in a given amount of time. So power is energy divided by time. Power is measured in watts after James Watt. And for our question about our kettle, Start off by writing the equation. We've got 360,000 joules provided in three minutes, which is 180 seconds. Comes out at 2,000 watts or two kilowatts. Uh, question number four. A man runs to the top of a 63 meter a uh, tall building, uh, how much energy does that require? Well, that building is Southern House. Well, it's, it's one of the first place that I worked, had my first proper job. And one of the games that we used to play was to see how quickly you could run up all 16 floors. Now, to run up 16 floors, if you use the equation E equals mgh, the one for gravitational potential energy, a 60 kilogram man, um, gravitational field strength of 10 newtons per kilogram, and 63 meters. Now that requires uh, 37,800 joules or 37.8 kilojoules of energy. You could walk 
from the bottom of the ground floor up to the 16th floor and it would require 37.8 kilojoules of energy and you could do that but running up it is I can tell you from experience is really 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 difficult and to do that quickly um, requires a lot of power so power is energy divided by time so it requires 37.8 kilojoules to climb to the top of it but to do it quickly uh, requires energy to be provided quickly now I've said in this question that it takes a person one minute now, if you do that, if the person did that in one minute, that's 60 seconds, that would be 630 watts of power provided. And I can tell you that I could not run up 16 floors in one minute. I don't know about you. Have a think about that. Do you think you could? How much electricity do things use? Your kettle, toaster, hairdryer, electric toothbrush, and a laptop, of course. So how much power do electrical items use? Well, this one is, is something that we can easily find out. And if you start thinking about the, the sheer number of things that use electricity, in this room, I've got a TV, I've got a printer, I've got uh, a stereo, uh, Alexa. Alexa, say something. Some things I say are funny, and some things I say are useful. To hear some of the things I can say, just ask, what can you say? Now, there you go then. Right, let's have a look. Let's, let's take you on a little journey and I'll show you some electrical appliances and hopefully we can find out the power ratings. And this is something you can also look at, you know, you can do yourself. Okay, ready, go. All right, okay, this is a bit of a weird one. Okay, so we get, head off towards the kitchen. All right, and here we are, I can see a microwave. Up there we've got a, oh, a deep fat fryer, a filter, uh, some sort of uh, food processor over here the microwave and let me show you this right I've got a toaster see the toaster right toaster now if you look at the bottom check most electrical appliances if you look at the bottom of them they should have a power rating so if we look at the toaster I don't know if that's one. Whoops, it's the right way up. At the bottom of the toaster, you have a power rating, two kilowatts. Right, two kilowatts means it's two thousand watts, or two thousand joules per second. Got a kettle here. Kettle. Bottom of the kettle. Whoops, power rating two. Now that is something like 3,000 watts, 3 kilowatts, 3,000 joules per second. Okay, now if you check, if you check electrical appliances at home, you'll be able to do the same. And there are huge amounts of electrical things when you start thinking about the things that we use. To where we started from. There we go. So why don't you go and give that one a go? How do we pay for our electricity? Well, in order to pay for electricity, you need to have an energy provider. So you need to buy your electricity from somebody. Now, in the past, this was relatively easy, but now it is quite difficult because there are lots and lots of UK energy suppliers. Let's just have a look at this website and I'll show you what I mean. The big six energy suppliers are British Gas, Scottish Power, N Power, Eon, EDF Energy and 
SSE. But if I scroll down this website and we just have a look at how many different energy suppliers there are, there's the A's, the B's, E, good energy, green energy, octopus energy, oink energy, tonic, toto, and zog. So you can see there's lots and lots of energy companies. And they form our energy market. So the energy market. Again, let's have a look at the website. So the energy market. Supplying energy to homes across the UK involves three key elements. Making electricity through generation, transporting gas and electricity, and selling it to the customer. Energy companies can work in any of these different areas, and some operate in all three of them, but some of them don't. So if we look at our energy suppliers again, some of these suppliers literally just sell you energy. They buy it from somebody else and they sell it to you. So these are middlemen. When you first choose an energy supplier, they will put you on a particular tariff. So that tariff will last you for one year, maybe two years. After that, you will move to a higher tariff, which is more expensive. And at that point, you need to switch your energy supplier. For me, it's easy enough. I've got a computer in front of me. But for a lot of people, they kind of like just stick with one particular company. Or for a lot of people who are elderly, they find this stuff very, very difficult. In which case, those people are actually being charged extra for nothing. Now, I only say this because maybe it's a good idea. Maybe you should find out who your energy supplier is, how long you've been with them, what tariff you're on, how many units you use, and you have to do all of that before you can switch. Uh, here's a website that you can use, uswitch.com, but there are others as well. So switching providers. Now, how do we pay for electricity? Well, first of all, we have to understand the units that are used. Now, going back to our equation, power is energy transferred over time taken. Rearranging that, energy transferred equals power times time taken. So energy companies don't operate in joules because a joule is a very, very small unit of energy. What they work in, yeah, you've got joules equals watts times seconds. Now what energy companies work in is kilowatts, so a thousand watts, and hours. So the unit that they work in is the kilowatt hour. And one kilowatt hour is called a unit of electricity and power companies charge per unit. So if we just go to the website, so what does a kilowatt hour mean? The kilowatt hour, as its abbreviation, is the most important bit of information on your bill from your energy provider. It lets you know how much electricity you're using to power your home and exactly how much you're paying for it. You should think of a kilowatt hour as how much electricity is used over a period of time to power an electrical device. To find out how many kilowatt hours you've spent running an appliance, you simply have to multiply its wattage by the number of hours you have used it for, and then divide this number by 1000. Okay, well, let's give you a couple of examples, hopefully make this a bit clearer. A PlayStation 4 uses 250 watts. 
How many units of electricity does it use in three hours of gaming? So the number of units or kilowatt hours is power times time. So you've got 250 watts, which is equal to 0.25 kilowatts times three is 0.75 kilowatt hours. So it's just the power times time divided by a thousand. A pair of hair straighteners operates at a power of 300 watts and uses 0.15 kilowatt hour of electricity. For how long were they used for? So the time is the number of kilowatt hours divided by the power. 0.15 divided by 0 0.3, 0 0.5 each. So they were used for half an hour. Okay, so try and complete the gaps in the table below. So that's just the ones that are in white. See if you can fill those in. Okay, so how well did you do? CD player, player 0.06, laptop 0.07, dishwasher 1, iron 0.5, There we go. So now the actual cost of electricity is the number of units of electrical energy multiplied by the cost per unit. So the cost equals the number of units times by the cost per unit. For example, in our PlayStation, if it used 0.75 kilowatt hours and the cost of electricity is 16 pence per unit or per kilowatt hour, comes out at 12p. Hair straighteners, point 0.15 at 12p, looks out at 1 point eight pence so I've got two examples there um, 16 pence per unit and 12 pence per unit so how much does it actually cost let's go back to our website and we'll find out so we're back on this website which is the eco experts it's just one I came across when I was looking for the answer to this question so if we scroll down, electricity providers. So those are the big six we talked about earlier on. So British Gas, EDF, Eon, NPower, Scottish Power, and SSE. And the cheapest one I've got on here is NPower, slightly cheaper. And the most expensive one is EDF Energy. Let's try this now. Calculate the cost of these appliances assuming one kilowatt hour is equal to 15 pence, which is current prices really. Looking at it, I can see a mistake, of course. The fridge freezer, the time it's used for is 24 hours, not 24 minutes. Dear me. Right, let's have a look at our answers. CD player, 0.9 pence. Laptop. 
So these don't sound like much money, do they? Dishwasher, 22.5 pence. Iron, 7.5. Microwave, 2.25. Washing machine, 11 pence for 90 minutes. Toaster, 6 pence. Fridge freezer, pound ninety four. But you can see it starts to, to get more expensive because that is over a 24-hour period. TV, 7.35 pence. Okay, so this is how we pay for electricity. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.